Good morning. This is Claudia Small, and I am the nurse at Triton Middle School, and the nurses have gotten together to um, provide a presentation on life-threatening allergies, and this year we have included information on asthma, epilepsy, and diabetes as well. We will also include information on universal precautions. The purpose of this presentation is to comply with the Department of Ed and Department of Public Health rec regulations regarding um, health services and emergency situations as it relates to asthma, diabetes, seizure disorders, anaphylaxis, and universal precautions. This presentation will help you recognize the signs and symptoms of medical emergencies in the school setting, again, um, including emergencies for a student that has asthma, um, hypoglycemia or low blood sugar in a student that has diabetes, a seizure in a student that might have epilepsy, and anaphylaxis in a student that might have a life-threatening allergy. We'll start here with asthma. Asthma is a disease that affects the lungs. It, causes, um, it can cause repeated episodes of wheezing, um, shortness of breath, some chest tightness. Um, sometimes people with asthma have um, coughing, particularly at night or in the early morning. Um, asthma is usually triggered by um, an allergen or an irritant. For example, um, a, a trigger might be pollen or dust mites. Um, the triggers vary per individual. Um, some students do have prescribed inhalers. Um, the most common that you might see in the school setting is a rescue inhaler. Um, students in elementary schools keep their rescue inhalers in the health office. Um, usually in middle and high school, students carry those rescue inhalers on their person and are able to administer, administer them on their own. They are instructed to come see the nurse if they are um, feel that that rescue inhaler has not given them relief of their symptoms. Just some other additional information that is helpful. Um, you, you, something you might see is you might see a student using one to two puffs from their inhaler prior to exercise or prior to a PE class. Um, this is just part of their treatment plan. They might have um, exercise-induced asthma, or some students might use them to prevent an asthma episode. Um, students should carry their inhalers on all field trips or outdoor activities, um, and you would refer to the student's individual health care plan, action plan, or 504 plan for additional information. Um, any questions um, regarding a student that you might have who has asthma, you can see your school nurse. Um, in the middle and high school, um, for athletics, if the athlete does not have his or her own inhaler, they are not permitted to practice or play if they have asthma. Just to give you a little bit of background information on um, epilepsy, it is a seizure disorder. Um, we do have several students in the district that have epilepsy or a history of seizures and have seizure action plans. Epilepsy is a neurological condition. It might produce, um, it does produce brief disturbances in the normal electrical function of the brain. Um, seizures are a symptom of epilepsy. There are many different types of seizures. I'm not going to get into all those details now, but not, n and not all seizures present with obvious symptoms. Um, again, you would meet with your school nurse and refer to the student's seizure action plan or 504 plan for additional information specific to that student. Some basic first aid for a student um, who has a seizure. You, number one, would keep the student safe and stay with the student. It is important to, if you can, to note the start time of the seizure and the duration. This is helpful information for your nurse to know. Um, some students do have rescue medication um, that the nurses might need to give and the parameters for giving that medication are based on how long the seizure has lasted for the student. You would want to position the student on his or her side to prevent the blockage of any uh, the airway from the tongue or from saliva or uh, sometimes somebody vomits after having a seizure and you wouldn't put anything in their mouth. You would contact your school nurse 
in the main office if the school nurse is not available in your building and maintain privacy best as possible try to clear the area of other students um, if the seizure lasts longer than five minutes or if a student is having repeated seizures um, again you would call the nurse or main office and that would likely be a 911 call little bit of background on diabetes uh, you the most common what you would see in the school setting is type 1 diabetes um, it's the type of diabetes that's diagnosed in children and young adults uh, previously you might have heard it referred to as juvenile diabetes in type 1 diabetes the body does not produce insulin um, Students with diabetes might require an insulin injection during the day. Um, they may have to go to the health office to actually draw up insulin in a syringe and, and get a shot of insulin during the school day. Or they might have to see the nurse and they, they might receive an injection of insulin um, through a little device that looks like a pen that's pre-filled. Or uh, they might wear a insulin pump on their body and um, they would give themselves um, different boluses of insulin during the school day, typically around snack and lunchtime. Again, uh, a student with diabetes in the school setting, the, you would meet with your school nurse who would review the student's um, emergency action plan and 504 plan um, and provide any training that was needed. Hypoglycemia is a uh, very low blood sugar, is an emergency situation for, for a diabetic. Um, possible signs and symptoms, um, the most common are hunger, shakiness, weakness, paleness, blurry vision, uh, rapid heart rate, sleepiness, change behavior, sweating, anxiety, dilated pupils, those are some of the more mild symptoms that you might see, uh, moderate to or severe symptoms, uh, yawning, irritability, extreme tiredness or fatigue, inability to swallow, sunny crying, confusion, restlessness, dazed appearance, unconsciousness, coma, seizure. Um, usually you note the mild symptoms first and able to treat that situation before it becomes a medical emergency. Um, so if you have a student with diabetes in your classroom and they start to notice they're feeling some symptoms of hypoglycemia or low blood sugar, um, you would call the nurse or call your main office if the nurse is not available. Um, and again, the school nurse would just sort of walk you through before the beginning of the school year, the student's diabetic plan and um, school management plan. Um, of course, if the student is unconscious having a seizure and the nurse is not available that is a 911 call life-threatening allergic reactions this is um, probably not new information for people um, this is something that we review on a regular basis with you all um, a person can have a severe allergic reaction resulting in death um, each school does have epinephrine, which is the life-saving medication for anaphylaxis. It's in the form of an auto-injector, and I'll demonstrate those for you. Um, the, the three most common different types of auto-injectors that you will see. The most common one is referred to as an EpiPen. Probably looks familiar to you all. Um, it's in an outer case. It's yellow on one end of the case and you can see the orange tip. You can see an expiration date through the case and there's also a small window that you can see the actual medication in the pre-filled auto injector. In the event that you would need to give an EpiPen to a student presenting with signs or symptoms of anaphylaxis, you would open the yellow cap slide out the auto injector. Do not touch the orange end of the auto injector. You want to grasp it in your hand, pull off the blue cap, and you want to use a swing and jab motion right in the outer thigh, and you're going to hear a click. 
and you want to hold that in place for about 10 seconds. I tell people to slowly count to 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now the data says that all the medication has gone in after about 3 seconds, but we still instruct people to hold it for 10 seconds, then you're sure all is good. This is a retractable tip. The um, needle goes back inside the auto injector. You would call 911 for the student, um, and you can just gently place it inside the tube and send that with the MS and the student. This is probably the most common device you'll see. Um, there is a generic form, and again, um, it's it's in an outer case, but it usually has it's it's a little rounder in shape and it usually has two ends you pull off. Um, you pull off a back cap and you usually have to pull off another end. And again, it's a swing and jab in the outer thigh and for 10 seconds hold that in place. And again, the um, needle is retracted back into the auto injector device. A third um, device you might see is called an AviQ, and this is becoming more popular. It doesn't look anything like the other two. It's a small square device, um, and it actually uh, talks you through what to do. You are going to pull the AviQ from the case. It's in this little case and it's going to talk to you. contains no needle or drug and is for training purposes only. Do not use this trainer during an allergic emergency. If you are ready to use, pull red safety guard down and off of this trainer. That's right here. Place black end against outer thigh. This is your black end here. Until you hear a click and hiss sound and hold in place for two seconds. Two, one, training complete. So that one's pretty easy. Um, the AviQ is also nice and small. Um, I tend to, we tend to see a lot of these with the older students. They're just easier for them to carry on their person. Um, I've had students carry one in their front pocket throughout the school day. Um, and they're very user friendly. They have sort of a calming effect, tell you just what to do. Um, if you have any further questions or if you would like to come to the health office and review any of those devices with your school nurse, feel free to contact us. We'd be glad to answer any further questions. Um, signs and symptoms of an allergic reaction include um, you might see some itching, swelling of the lips, tongue or mouth. Um, in the mouth face area, um, you might see some swelling around the eyes and the face. The throat, uh, the student might complain of some itching or a sense of uh, tightness in the throat, hoarseness, hacking cough. They might be constantly clearing their throat. Uh, on their skin, they, they might um, complain of hives or an itchy rash. Um, again, you might notice some swelling around the face or extremities. They might feel a little cold or clammy or just not right. Um, in the gut, they might say they feel sick. They might vomit, abdominal cramps, diarrhea. The respiratory uh, system, they might complain of feeling short of breath, repetitive coughing, wheezing. Um, uh, cardiac symptoms present such as a thready or weak pulse and loss of consciousness. Um, treatment for anaphylaxis. Uh, usually a student with a life-threatening allergy has an allergy action plan which identifies the life-threatening allergen. For example, it could be tree nuts, peanuts, eggs. Those are some of the common ones. Um, and then there's a plan below as to what interventions um, are to be given for that student. Some physicians do order Benadryl. Um, that does have to be given by a nurse. And then a physician will um, order an automatic 
a, a physician will order an EpiPen for any of the um, symptoms that we previously reviewed. Um, if you are trained at, in using an EpiPen or an epinephrine auto injector, um, you are able to intervene for a student with a known life-threatening allergy and give that student an EpiPen. Um, you want to be sure it is the right person, the right medication for that person, the right dose, and you're giving it the right route and at the right time. But if you need to intervene and give an EpiPen, it is always a 911 call. Even if the student feels better and says, oh, that I'm feeling so much better now, you, you must call an ambulance. That student must be transported to an emergency room and be observed for several hours. Um, some people do require a second dose of epinephrine. It is not uncommon for um, someone to say they, they feel a little jittery after getting an EpiPen or even might feel like they might vomit. Um, it is better to have a person sitting down or lying down. Um, teachers should always ensure that students have their EpiPen with them if they're going um, outside of the building or any field trip activity. Um, stinging insects is a, is a common um, life-threatening allergy, so particularly in the fall and, and spring. Um, it's just a, a good reminder that if you're going outside for class activity, be sure that you grab that student's EpiPen before heading out. Um, coaches, uh, the athlete is to carry an uh, EpiPen with them, um, and it must go to practices and games as well if the student has a life-threatening allergy. Just review the basics of universal precautions. Um, under this set of precautions, we have to have our mindset that all blood or body fluids are considered infectious. Um, so disposable gloves should be used as a barrier to minimize exposure to blood and body fluids. Um, any soiled clothes a student might have should be, of course, handled with gloves and placed in a plastic bag to be sent home. Um, any soiled, uh, visibly soiled waste from a, a cut wound or um, soiling should be placed in a plastic bag and then in the trash. Um, and hands should be thoroughly washed with soap and water. There are just a few more um, resources here on your last page if you feel like you would like a little bit more information, um, this is just a resource list that we use to put together this PowerPoint. Um, if you have any further questions, uh, feel free to contact your school nurse and prior to the start of the year, your school nurse will help you identify any students that might have conditions such as asthma, diabetes, uh, or epilepsy or life-threatening allergies.